Hello. Welcome to the delay 13th video in the profpilot.co.uk flight training video series. Oh my goodness, the narrator has changed. I've got rid of the kindly American gentleman narrator, in a fit of visceral patriotism, and replaced him with me, the reassuringly academic sounding British bloke. This episode will be joining the party that has piston engines. Tally ho, then, what what? First of all, this, is a piston engine. As subtly hinted at by the name, a piston engine is made up of pistons. You can't see them in this picture though, as they are doing their ninja impression, and are skulking in the shadowy depths of these cylinders. Looking at just one of these cylinders, here is a cross section looking inside. There is the cheeky little piston. This is the cylinder casing that houses all the combustible festivities. This, is the inlet valve, which opens to allow a fuel air mixture to enter the cylinder. The piston moves downwards, which sucks the mix through the valve into the cylinder. The inlet valve then closes, trapping the fuel air mix inside. The piston moves upwards again, reducing the volume and increasing the pressure and temperature of the fuel air mixture. This is the spark plug, and at this point, it sparks, igniting the mixture. This combusting fuel quickly raises the temperature and pressure inside the cylinder, forcing the piston black downwards again. This is where the engine gets its power from. This is the exhaust valve. It opens, and the piston moves upwards again, pumping the used fuel air mixture out of the cylinder following its brief moment of glory. This is the auto cycle, and can be surmised as induction, compression, power, exhaust. Or, in another way, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. So we've got a piston. But how does this up and down movement help us twirl a big metal thing at the front of our aeroplane? And how does the piston move up and down when it's not on its power stroke? Well hold your horses, I'm about to tell you. The answer is in the foreboding duo that is the connecting rod, and the crankshaft. They transfer the up and down motion of the piston into the more useful circular motion of the propeller, as you can see here. To understand the crankshaft, we need to look at a side view of the engine. Here, we have four cylinders, viewed side on. Here are the connecting rods, and here is the crankshaft. In this example, we pretend that the propeller is bolted on at this end of the crankshaft. The cylinders are numbered from the propeller backwards, and they are set up so that one cylinder is always on its power stroke signified by this yellow block. They are also set up so that the firing order is spread across the crankshaft. First cylinder one will fire, then three, then four, then two. This is to ensure that there is not too much pressure put on the crankshaft at any one time, and avoids excessive vibration, and expensive noises. Combustion engines are not very efficient, in fact the majority of the energy in the fuel all goes to heating the exhaust air, and the engine itself. This is very inefficient. In fact only around 25% of the energy in the fuel all goes to propelling the aircraft. I won't go into a rant about the fact that countless generations ago a dinosaur died, was buried by tons and tons of rock, waited around for millions of years for its appointment with a big tube that sucked it out of miles of ground into a pipeline, that regurgitated it in a big ship, that floated it thousands of miles across the globe, that dumped it in a refinery, that turned it into plain fuel, that was then slung into a lorry, that delivered it to your airport, that pumped it in your plane, and after all that only its leg was used to make your airplane go forward. Sigh. Because everything is so hot, we put all these little fins on the cylinders. This allows sweet, nourishing, cooling air to thoroughly cool the cylinders. If you have insufficient cooling, your cylinders can have hot spots. This can cause the fuel air mix to ignite, as it enters the cylinder, before the spark plug has had any say in the matter, which is known as pre-ignition. The ominously named detonation is similar to this, but it occurs after the spark plug tries to ignite the mixture. Instead of only igniting from the top of the cylinder as it should however, something else makes it combust from another point too. This can be anything from a tiny contaminant, hot spots, or if the mixture is compressed just a little bit too much. You don't want either pre-ignition or detonation to happen, or else you may find yourself hosting an unwelcome and impromptu visit to the cockpit by bits of your engine. So keep a stressed eye on your temperature gauges in flight. Let's look at the fuel slash air mix now. Oh joyful praises. The amount of fuel particles, and air particles, sucked into the cylinder during the induction phase of the auto cycle can alter the way the engine performs. The ratio of fuel particles to air particles, by weight, is the mixture, and is controlled in the cockpit using the eponymous mixture lever, shown here by the praising lady again. She really loves aviation. The chemically correct level is 15 parts air to 1 part fuel by weight, as this ensures all the oxygen in the air combines with all the fuel particles. 
This releases all the energy in the fuel, with no waste. Using the chemically correct level is not used that often, as while it promotes no waste, it also burns the hottest, which promotes detonation, and therefore promotes no aeroplane. Which is not all that good. Instead, using a slightly richer mixture, where there is a higher fuel to air ratio, means some fuel is not burnt, as there is not enough air to combine with it, and this has a cooling effect. Using a leaner mixture, where there is a lower fuel to air ratio, also lowers the temperature, as there is less fuel to release heat, but because of this, has the side effect of reducing the power released by the engine. For high power settings, such as at takeoff, climb out, or on the go around, we always use a rich mixture, as we need power, however we don't want to destroy the engine from detonation. That would ruin our day. There is more flexibility in the cruise and depending on conditions, you can use a weaker mixture for better economy, and saving yourself from shrivelly wallet syndrome. There's a lot more thrills to be had with piston engines, but I will leave you with that for now. Don't forget to rate and comment on this video, and add your flight school reviews at crosspilot.co.uk. Also, if you want videos on a specific subject, just let me know in the comments. From the reassuringly academic sounding British bloke and myself, goodbye.